Hey everybody, <clears throat> let's say you have a task where you have one spreadsheet with a list of salespeople, the products they sold, the revenue from those products, and the date the product was sold. And your task is to take the rows of specific salespeople and move them to their own sheet. Now there are three ways I can think about doing this. And let's start with probably the most obvious, but the most manual. If this is a one-time task and there's not a lot of rows, you can simply go into this sheet, put in a filter, filter for one of these individuals, and you can just copy and paste over to the next sheet. Um, that's fantastic, like I said, if this is a one-time task and if there's not a lot of rows. Now, there's another way of doing it using a feature that is really unique to Google Sheets, and that's using the Google API query. Um, and there's some certain advantages to this as well. So let's say we have a sheet here with Eddie. We have a salesperson over here named Eddie. So we can use the Google Query API to bring over all the rows that match a salesperson by the name of Eddie. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go over here. Actually, first we need to do is we need to grab the URL of the master sheet. And we are going to use Query. And because we are querying data from a different sheet, we need to also use the import range function with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in import range. Uh, the first argument there is the URL of the sheet that you are querying, and then the range, which in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and put A to D. We close that out. Next is the query, and that goes in double quotes. So I'm gonna say select everything where column one and notice, if you're familiar with Google Query API, um, you can use the letter of the columns. So in this case, uh, I'm using column one. Because it's in, I'm using two different sheets. If this were all in the same sheet, I could simply say select everything where A equals Eddie Houdigy. Um, But because for some reason I'm in a different sheet, I have to actually specify it as column one or call one. So select everything where call one equals, and this has to be in a single quote, Eddie Houdigy, which is the salesperson's name. I'm gonna close that out with a double quote. And because I do not want headers to be brought over, I already have my headers here, I'm gonna put a zero. And what this does is this basically runs kind of a SQL query against the previous spreadsheet and just pulls over everything, um, every line that matches the name Eddie where I specified it. The great thing about this particular method is if we were to go down here and let's say we were going to add another row with Eddie's name in there, if I do that, it automatically gets brought over here because the Google Query API is going to constantly query the original sheet. And as that changes, it brings over information. So that's a real benefit there. The only downside is this is dynamic. So let's say, for example, any reason uh, that somebody tries to go and edit this uh, or add to it or change it, uh, it's not going to let you. And if this one cell gets changed, you basically lose everything. Um, and so it's only going to be there as long as the source data is there. So let's say, for example, if the master sheet gets deleted, you're going to lose all of that data. So in this case, we want that data to be persistent, not ephemeral, which brings us to the last method, which is using Google App Script to parse through that original table, find the names of the, the people that we're looking for, and drop them into their own individual sheets. And I've already written uh, written the code. So up here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on automation tools. And I'm gonna click on this function, move reps to individual sheets. And when I do that, you can see that both the Eddie sheet and the Joseph sheet was filled out. And I only wrote the code to actually just pull two, two sales reps over for this example. And these are not dynamic. These values have been copied over. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I wrote the app script in order to accomplish this task of parsing through all the rows 
on the original sheet, matching up with the salesperson's name, and then copying it over. Once again, there are pros and cons when you look at the app script method versus the Google Query IPA, uh, API method. Uh, I think there are occasions to use either one depending on what your needs are. And Google Query API is extremely useful, um, so much so that I plan to do an entire series on it at some point, just not in this video. But let's actually take a look at the app script that I wrote in order to be able to copy rows over based on a single cell value. So I'm gonna to go to extensions and I'm gonna to go to app script. And let's just walk through what I did here. Um, the first thing I did here is just create that custom menu item. So function on open event. So that just basically says, hey, when the sheet opens up, detect that and then run this script and let UI equals spreadsheet.getUI. And then it's UI create menu. And I called the menu automation tools. And this is technically all one line, but what I did was just to make it a little bit more readable, I um, brought it down and indented it, although you could write this all on one line, and it's dot add item, and this is move reps to individual sheets, is the name of that menu item that you saw when I clicked on automation tools, and I connected it to the function move rows. And the last, part I had to add was to simply tell app script add to UI. And so this whole little chunk of code does nothing but put this here. And when I click on it, it has this information here. And when I click on that, it calls the function move rows. So now let's go look at move rows because this is where all the work actually takes place. So to start off with, uh, I created a couple of constants, one for my spreadsheet, constant SS equals spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet and that's what grabs the actual spreadsheet when i need to reference it i also created another constant called sheet which is the tab here the sheet one i could have called it by name uh, but in this case uh, i'm just saying get the active sheet whichever one is the one that you're working in then i actually had to call the sheets that i want to transfer to so i created a constant called eddie sheet and that is spreadsheet app dot open by ID. And I got the ID of that spreadsheet, then dot get sheet by name. And in this case, I'm just using sheet one. This could have been broken out by uh, quarters, by months, by years, however you want to do it. But in this case, I'm just going to use sheet one. Uh, and I did the uh, and then I also to help me sort of get my bearings on what's going on in that sheet. Uh, two of my, or at least one of my favorite um, methods to use is I created a variable here called constant Eddie last row, and that equals Eddie sheet, which I created up here, which goes out and grabs this spreadsheet. Get me the last row, and get last row will get the last active role, uh, row. So in this case, when I first started the um, uh, the script the first time without any of this data in here, the last row was row one. So when the, the first time that I ran this, the constant of Eddie last row equaling Eddie sheet dot get last row would have returned the value of one because I only had data in the first row. Um, if I were to run it now, it would return the value of eight. And so um, it basically just whenever you run the script, it looks to see where that last row is. And then I also did this, this same exact thing for my second spreadsheet, which is Joseph sheet. Uh, I use the spreadsheet.app open by ID. I grab the ID. And by the way, the ID is right here in the URL. So we have docs.google.com slash spreadsheets slash D slash this string of random numbers, that is the ID of the spreadsheet. And so anytime you're referencing another sheet in App Script, this is the value that you're gonna have to go grab and put into the open by ID uh, function. So I go here, I grab Eddie sheet, uh, I get the last row of that sheet, I grab Joseph sheet, 
uh, and I get the last row of that sheet. And so if I were to do this for every salesperson, um, I would just basically copy those two lines over, uh, change the name of the variable, and obviously change the name of the spreadsheet ID. Um, right here, I created another variable called let last row equals sheet dot get last row. And this basically does the same thing over here that these top two do. Um, but because I specified sheet and sheet is defined up here as get me the active sheet in this workbook, this is getting me the last row of this spreadsheet. So in this case, this would return, uh, I know I just added this line, but this is now the last row. So this would return the value of 33. All right. So now we've gone out and we've created the variables that we need to work or grab, if you will, or create ranges for the master sheet as well as the two sheets that we're going to be moving to. Um, let's actually figure out how to get those rows moved. So I created a variable called sort range and I set it equal to sheet, which is the active sheet of the master Google sheet dot get sheet values. And I created a range here of two, one, last row, four. Now, if you're not familiar with um, the way that you define ranges, the first number is the row that you wanna start. So in this case, we are starting on the second row. The second number is the column you wanna start with. So we're starting second row, first column. The third number is the number of rows that you wanna go down. It's not the row number. It's the number of rows that you want to traverse down um, in order to encapsulate the, the data inside the range. So what I did was I started with two, second row, first column, go down. In this case, it would be 33 rows. Um, that's what we determined is our last row here. So, and also two, so we started second row, first column, last row, and then the last number is how many columns over you wanna go. And we're gonna go four columns over because we have four columns of data. So this is, uh, I call this sort range because this is the range that I wanna sort through. And this is how I grabbed it. And really what I did was though, uh, it's, short, it's sort range, but it is grabbing the values from that range. This logger.log down here, this just is a very quick and easy way of testing. Um, for example, if you wanna make sure that when you put in last row that you are getting row 33, um, it's great to put in logger.log uh, last row. And just to check what value you're getting back, that can actually save you a lot of troubleshooting. So the next thing I do is I need to create counters. Uh, so I created a counter for Joseph in a counter for Eddie, and I set it to the number one. And we're gonna be iterating uh, through these, or adding, or I'm sorry, incrementing these counters uh, at various stages throughout the next part, the next and last part of the script. So this is where it gets really interesting here. So we're creating a loop, uh, it's a for loop. And what we're doing is for variable i equals one, um, so essentially I'm setting I to one. I is going to be the main um, incrementer or iterator throughout this, this uh, loop. As long as I is less than or equal to the length of the this, of this sort range. So this range that I created up here with all these values, I'm basically saying as long as whatever I is set at is less than or equal to the length of that range, then add one to i. And this is shorthand for simply doing that, i plus plus. And so this is going to allow us to loop through that until i evaluates as either being equal to um, or greater, I'm sorry, or greater than the length of sort range. All right, so what we have here, the first thing I need to do as I'm sorting through this range, I'm gonna be going line through line through line the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what name 
is in that first column. So I do that with this line here. Let name equal sheet dot get range i1 dot get value. Okay, so what's happening here? So what I'm doing is I need the name uh, within this one cell. So I'm using my i as the iterator. And what I'm saying is, is sheet dot get name i1. And keep in mind, this is the first time this is running. So i is equal to one. Um, the way that we walked through in the last example where I defined the range up here for sort range is we know that this is first row, first column, number of rows down, number of columns over. When you only give it two values, that's all, all it will do. So if i equals one and it's one, one, and we're doing it against the sort range, which starts on the second row, column or row one would be this and column one would be this. So essentially I'm getting the value of this cell. So let name equals sheet dot get range I, which equals one for the row, one for the column, give me that value and put it in name. And just as a test, this console.log, um, all I wanna make sure is when I do that, I am getting back the name uh, and I, I'll show you uh, all the output in the console when I run the, the uh, script again. And then once I have that name, I just have a series of if statements. And to be clear, if you are a little bit more advanced uh, in App Script or in JavaScript in general, you know that, that there's a number of ways to do this. You could have done a switch statement. Um, there's you know probably a few other ways that you could have done it. But because of the fact that I wanted a few extra things to happen here, um, I needed to, or I decided to use an if statement. So essentially, once I have the name, I'm gonna go down here and actually say, if that name, the value of that name equals Joseph Palumbo, then let row values equal sheet dot get range I, which in this case is still one. Uh, so row one, column one, go down one row, which ultimately um, this is saying, when you give this a one, you're basically saying stay on that same row. Um, we're not moving at all. So I, which equals one, is the first row, first column, stay on that same row, but go four columns over. That's what we're looking at there. So ultimately when I say let row values equal this range, let's just look at it over here again. And keep in mind, we're not doing this against the entire table, we're doing it against the range I defined, which is just this area here. So we are saying, the range is row one, column one, row uh, one row, which is still the same row, column four. So ultimately that gets us this entire line here. So let row values equal this dot get values. So we're not necessarily getting the range, we're getting the values from that range or from that row. Then in the next line, it is Joseph Sheet, which I defined uh, upper in, uh, higher in the script, or previously in the script, Joseph Sheet dot get range, Joseph last row plus Joseph counter. So this is where it might get a little complicated. Remember up here, over here, since I'm working with two spreadsheets and I'm gonna be putting data in all these different places, I actually need to have separate counters for each sheet. Um, so if Eddie sheet gets three rows added to it, and then I finally get to Joseph sheet, I don't want, I don't want it to start on the fourth row. So in order to keep things separate, I just created separate counters. So in this case, what we're looking at is Joseph's or Joseph sheet dot get range, Joseph last row plus Joseph counter. So what this is doing is when this sheet is run, this is not going to have any value is in it right here. So Joseph last row is going to be one, but I don't want to overwrite this data. So I need to go one down. So it's Joseph last row plus Joseph counter. Joseph counter is currently equal to one. So it would use row two. So essentially this is saying row two, first column, same row, four columns over. So 
one row or uh, starting with the second row, first column, stay in the same row, go four columns over. And we are gonna set the values that we grabbed up here for row values. And then once we do that, we're going to increment Joseph counter and this will tell the script, okay, we've just added a row to Joseph's sheet. So if you need to add another row, make sure you go down one extra line. Uh, and then we do the same thing for Eddie's sheet. We grab the same row values. So let the row values equal uh, sheet.getRange of i. Um, so i in this case would be would still be one. So uh, the first row, uh, first column, stay on the same row, go four columns over, and it's the same deal with Eddie's sheet. I am using Eddie last row plus Eddie counter, and we are gonna, first column, we're gonna stay on the same row, we're gonna go four columns over. And that's all we're really doing, is all we're doing is we are just grabbing the name from that first column, and we are using if statements to say if that name matches um, a certain value, then get all of the values from that row, copy them to this other sheet, and make sure that you increment the counter for that one person. Um, and I'm gonna show you something here really interesting. In this case, I've gone back, I have uh, commented out Joseph counter and Eddie counter, because we wanna see what happens when you don't have separate counters. Um, and honestly, I need to also comment these out here, otherwise it is going to throw an error. So, and it still might throw an error actually. Yep, so Joseph counter is not defined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this row down and I'm going to copy this row down and I'm gonna comment the first one out. And in the second one, I'm going to remove Joseph counter. I'm gonna do the same thing for Eddie. I'm gonna comment the first one out and I'm going to remove Eddie counter. So we don't have references to a uh, variable that is no longer being defined in this. So let's save that. Let's go ahead and run it. There we go. You can see first of all right here where my checks are. So I have logger.log last row and that was the last row of the master sheet. It is returning 33. And then over here, uh, I have console.log, so I used a slightly different way of doing it, and I'm saying let me know what i is equal to and what name it's associated with. So in the first case, uh, one is salesperson, uh, two is Joseph Palumbo, three is Eddie, four is Jaime Ponce, five is Katie Bodie, six is Richard Honorio. So I just wanna make sure that I am in fact iterating through that. And that was just a test that I, I put in here when I was writing this. But if you look over here, notice what happened. That same line got pasted over in the same row on both of these several times. It basically just took up the header row. Um, so that is why we need to have separate iterators for all the sheets. So if I go in here, if I hit Command Z, actually, let's just go ahead and do this the old fashioned way. Let's go ahead and reset these sheets here by copying this information over. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'm gonna get rid of this. So that's what happens when you don't have separate iterators, but you're, iter but you're uh, looping through a sheet and then sending the data to other sheets. You also need to keep track of what's going on in those other sheets in terms of how many rows do you have, how many rows have you added. So let's go back and let's switch this back. I'm gonna remove my comments from Joseph counter and I'm gonna remove my, com remove my comment from Eddie counter. I am also gonna go ahead and just get rid of this line because I don't need it. And I'm going to uncomment this one and this one. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna get rid of this sheet and I am going to uncomment this one and uncomment this one. So let's save it. We have no data in these other ones here. And I am going to make sure that move rows is selected and I am going to run it. You see my checks come through and you see now that we have that extra counter for each, show, uh, for each sheet, a Joseph counter and an Eddie counter that we are now getting all of 
their rows based on the value of their name. All right, so I hope that wasn't uh, complicated. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to take this code and I'm gonna put it into a gist on GitHub and I'm gonna link it down below. Um, naturally, if you have any questions about how to uh, write or run this particular uh, script, you are welcome to put a comment below. I try to respond to comments as quickly as possible. And of course, if this video was helpful, uh, I always appreciate if you like and subscribe. So thank you so much, everyone. Remember, work smarter, not harder. Automate everything you can. And let's try and be productive out there. Thank you so much.